Justin Trudeau committed the biggest fraud on this country. That is disgusting. He was cornered. He was caught. He doubled down. Red flags galore. What an absolute joke. Completely toned. It is so disrespectful. Realize he is the most disliked prime minister in the history of this country. Thank you, Chair. But it, it just, it really angers me because, and, and, and you uh, witnesses have been, this isn't your first rodeo. You, you've all been either party to or have heard how many of your colleagues across a number of departments have prepped, have prepared, have attended in person, even though you got the ability to appear hybrid as well, but to attend in person, and after giving your opening statements, working hard on your opening statements, getting one round in from the Conservatives, only to be met with gamemanship by the Liberal bench, supported by their NDP colleagues. It's, for me, it has happened at least a dozen times since January the 1st. And in my view, it is so disrespectful to you as professionals. So that's why I offer my sincerest apology. But should we be surprised? Because where there's controversy, there is risk. The government clearly knows they're not currying any favor with Canadians. Depending on the poll, they're at least 20 points down. A leader who refuses to smell the coffee and realize he is the most disliked prime minister in the history of this country, completely tone deaf to the reality, tone deaf to his own caucus, who quietly and quite often publicly voice their displeasure with his leadership. So they will take cues from a failed leader as a prime minister. They'll take cues from a prime minister's office who loves to control and to mitigate the damage. We've been exposing the damage of this issue every single week at government operations. What an absolute joke. An absolute lie. We're talking about fraud in this committee. In my respectful opinion, the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau committed the biggest fraud on this country and Canadians. Everything that I read out in the record, he has done the complete opposite. Just that last line, to apply the utmost care and prudence in the handling of public funds. Would we be in the mess we are right now? Would we have the amount of public debt that we have now if he actually for one minute had respect for one dollar of taxpayer money? Would we be spending over $21 billion on outside consultants and contractors with no oversight? Would we be in the situation where we've expanded our federal public service by 40%, increasing salaries substantially? Have Canadians looked at their level of service across this country and say, wow, I've received 40% more in value of services. I think if, if all four of you and Canadians who are watching this right now on my social media were to contact my staff in my constituency office who spend all day long either on hold with various departments or dealing with 
issues that should be handled by our professional public service. They have very little time to do anything else other than government work. And I'm sure I am not alone in that assessment. I'm sure this is not just a conservative issue. I'm sure my block uh, friend, colleague, Miss Madame Vignola, would probably concur with me because I've been talking to various MPs from across this country who are facing the very same thing. And I'm sure every constituency of the Liberal bench and the NDP member who is appearing virtually also has similar stories because that's what's happening. We are not getting value for our tax dollars. And I hear that daily from constituents. I hear that daily from Canadians from coast to coast to coast on my social media. They applaud me daily at my diligence in asking the tough questions. I often said, you know, you can take the prosecutor out of the courtroom, but you can't take the prosecutor out of the politician. It's a strategy. It is a method that I've honed and developed for 30 years. And I know that when I ask a question based on that response, there might be another 10 questions I'm going to have to ask. Because it's like peeling that proverbial onion. And I know that various journalists from across this country have remarked, in my view, very correctly that the rot in this government that this committee and other committees are exposing is just the tip of the iceberg. And we have a mandate as parliamentarians, we have a mandate as proud members of the mighty Ogo to ask those tough questions. So this is not political gamemanship, as Mr. Jawari has, has remarked on a number of occasions. It's not acting as a prosecutor, judge, jury, and executioner, as Mr. Souza often remarks. It's asking the questions that Canadians have been asking us. And I can only speak for myself and my conservative colleagues, and I dare say I will probably speak for Ms. Vaniola. We take our responsibility as parliamentarians extremely seriously. And our role is to listen, to advocate, and to seek solution. Government, or government bench, liberal bench, they don't want nothing to do with it. I made the time to be here, as did other members who are physically appearing here. Mr. Jawari, I had great, I had great faith. I saw Mr. Jawari when I walked into this room. I said, great. We actually may complete a two-hour meeting here in the summer. But how disappointing to hear the moment that he got the floor that he wanted to shut this down and prevent any further summer meetings. So just like Mr. B we know that there are rules that allow sole sourcing, but we also know through various reports from the AG and the procurement ombud that there were serious, serious violations of those rules to allow fr liberal, friendly consultants and contractors to receive government funds. Classic example of that, GC strategies. Now, Maybe this is what they didn't want you to answer. There are Liberal Party of Canada links to Think Digital. Surprise, surprise. The CEO of that company, Ryan Androsoff, is a Liberal Party activist and donor to the Liberal Party of Canada. A consultant of Think Digital, Winter Fedak, made 78 donations to the Liberal Party of Canada and was the Liberal candidate 
in Regina Leuven in 2019. She is listed as a 2023 mentor on the Pierre Elliott Trudeau Foundation website. Trudeau Minister Terry Beach appeared on the consulting firm's podcast just three months ago. Now, on the surface, red flags galore. What the hell is going on? The CEO is a liberal activist. Does it raise any alarm bells that one of the current employees ran for the Liberal Party and made donations? We already know about the liberal-friendly linked firm like McKinsey receiving over $200 million since Justin Trudeau took office. Does the government vet and screen for Liberal Party links before handing out $400,000 in taxpayer money. It doesn't, he lied repeatedly over the last nine years as to how he is delivering for Canadians. And it's a mockery. It's a mockery on the intelligence of Canadians who now see through, now see through this government's jargon and bullet points, and talking points, and appearances in front of cameras. Take, for example, our Deputy Prime Minister, Finance Minister, Christia Freeland. But Canada has a AAA credit rating. Will you tell that to the single mother in my riding who is deciding to go without feeding herself to ensure that she puts food on the table for her children. Do you think when she's struggling at the cashier, do you think when she's struggling to pay for those groceries, she's got Christia Freeland ringing in her ears? But I should be proud that as a nation, we have a triple A credit rating. It's tone deaf. It's no wonder that all the members of this liberal bench are facing the prospect of losing in the next election. Because this is the reality. This is the failed government that they defend day after day after day and are doing it today in this shameless example of partisan, partisanship. The only prime minister to have accumulated more debt than any other prime minister of this great nation combined he is the first prime minister to have been found guilty. Let that sink in. To have been found guilty of ethical violations. We know that the prime minister doesn't like to read. That's been quite evident. He gets read to by his handlers. See, the prime minister has a penchant for lying. He's a very good liar, and that's a classic example of a lie. He was cornered. He was caught. He doubled down, stared Canadians in the eye, and said, I didn't interfere. Here we have the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff disregard the laws of Canada, disregard the Criminal Code of Canada. That is disgusting. It is appalling. Have you heard any heartfelt apologies from the Prime Minister or anyone from the Liberal government? No. They've created a culture of incompetence. And Canadians are fed up. But when you are a failed liberal candidate, there's a little bit of loyalty that the government will extend to you. So what type of message does that send to Canadians? You're not a prime minister for all. You're not looking out for the best interests of Canadians. You're looking out for the best interests of liberal supporters. 